Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to some more Ancient Empires 2.0, the Total War Attila mod that goes ahead and brings the ancient world to life. So, the new update should be live by the time you guys are watching this, so make sure you go over to the link in the description and check the mod out itself. The new update adds in so much new content that I would have gone over in my previous video in episode 1, so make sure you check that out if you haven't seen, uh, seen that quite yet. So, yes, in this episode, we will be continuing on our campaign, and as the Arverni, not the Aravasi, like I kept on saying in the previous episode. Sometimes you just make a, you, you say something and then all of a sudden you just immediately realize that you made a mistake. And then you see that first comment and you just have to face palm because you know it's all anyone's going to be talking about in the video. Uh, but yeah, we are playing as the Arverni, not the Aravasi. I'm, I'm too used to playing my Spanish ways from that head to head with Republic of Play. But you guys went ahead and smashed the like target on that previous episode. So if we get 300 likes on this video, I'll go ahead and upload another hour-long episode tomorrow so if you guys are enjoying this series and you want to see more of it then obviously drop a like and a comment down below it really helps out the channel that's been that you guys want to see more of the content and also you know you'll get another episode tomorrow rather than in, in the next couple of days so yeah hit that like button if you are enjoying the content so yeah we have a bit of a predicament now because uh yeah these are the, tri these are the tribes right uh yeah so in the last episode we took on one of the enemy factions to the south of us securing ourselves another settlement which is really nice and this is what I was afraid of I think these guys are going to declare war on me at some point now we've taken that settlement we are obviously a big threat to them they've brought an army here I might declare war on them to preempt this war honestly can we get our spy back here as well yeah we can get our spy back here so let's bring our spy back I was thinking about I mean our army is still pretty battered from our previous wars obviously if I was to declare war, I wonder, because I might I might just fight these two guys. Their armies are pretty weak, and if I could smash both of these, even with our weakened army, we could then maybe look to take on the settlement or already starve the settlement out. But we wouldn't actually be able to starve it out because it's a poor settlement, but we could definitely take this on in the open field really easily. Um, so I might just merge up everybody because we're not replenishing because I think we're recruiting this. Yeah, we're, we're converting the main building that gives us the troops. So we don't actually recruit anyone, unfortunately. So yeah, I might just merge everybody down. So we have 19 men with a handful of strong infantry and a handful of non-strong infantry. I, I assume there is no mercenaries to be had. Yeah, no mercenaries to be had. And if we were to declare war on them, right, we can do that because they broke our trade agreement. So I should be able to... No, I can't. Oh, that's annoying. That's kind of annoying because they they broke it, not me. So we have a lot of money. I might go ahead and build another army back home. So your replenishment and ammunition, which isn't bad. Your campaign movement range. God, I, I love how there's just, there's just... Wait, like, this is so cool having all the traits here and stuff. It's a really good job they've done here. You know, it actually makes, like, commanders actually feel like commanders. Got sanitation bear as well. So morale when attacking at sea. So he's more of a fleet guy, which we don't really need. Warlord, this man, just supply tribes, necessary honor. Okay, cool. And then I guess this guy is probably our best. He has rally one unlocked, which is good. He has a bigger commander aura. This guy's a planner, which is kind of good for other stuff for. Yeah, governing ship, but I mean, he's going to command, so let's pick this guy. He's only 34 as well. This guy's 52. He's a bit old. This guy has a little bit more uh, age left in him. He's This guy's the most loyal, though. I mean, no one's the most loyal. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so yeah, let's just go and raise another army here. Um, a cavalry or an infantry unit. I mean, the Celtic bodyguard is pretty good, but it costs us 500 gold, and whereas this guy only costs us 200. So let's recruit him. Let's stick him inside the settlement, and let's raise, I don't know, just, just a small force. A small force for us to... Um, why did these guys take... Oh my god, what is going on? Why is it taking two turns to recruit? I'm not recruiting anywhere. I wonder if it's like... Because there's an enemy army here? I wonder why it's taking forever to recruit. I guess either way, we will start our recruitment process. Um, by doing that. Okay, cool. Let's just get some soldiers there. Just in case he does attack, I'd like to have another general there. Just in case. I mean, we still have a, the governor and a, a chieftain unit as well as all these guys. And it's going to be a walled settlement. So, I'm feeling pretty confident. But even still, let's just go ahead and prepare ourselves uh, for the worst. Because we're going to declare war on them in, four, in three turns if they don't declare war on me. They did move an army into my territory, though, without military access. So, one can only assume... 
that they are planning something, whether it's this turn or next turn, whenever it may be. But raising that other army, we have the money to, to, to upkeep it. We have 20 grand in the bank. I'm going to aggression yeah, back with the uh, Canterburyan tribes for sure. I'll accept that I have no ambition in going into uh, Spain anytime soon. And they'll be eventually a great ally against the Romans when it does come to pass and we do decide to take them on. Because that's kind of how I really want this campaign to end probably in the next day, like, four episodes or something. I would love for us to take on the Romans and have like, you know, a couple really epic engagements. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe we won't get that far. Maybe if we get enough likes in the video, we will get that far. We'll obviously Whoa. just have to see it, mate. There we go. I assumed it was coming. I thought we'd still have a couple more turns before they decided, but uh, no. And they're going to run inside. They're going to go over there. Okay. And they're going to fortify. Interesting. They are so starving here. They shouldn't be starving anymore, though, now that they fortified. And there's also, um, I wonder where that army's gone, eh? I, oh, it's actually, it's, I thought it was an ambush for a second. I was like, I wonder where it's gone. Either way, though, we'll get some infantry up in this army. Again, we are making a ton of cash, but it's fine. We really do need to replenish her and maybe recruit a couple more soldiers as well. Um, we could just pick up some cheaper spears. Is this army good enough? Because if we were to attack these guys, yeah, the reinforcements, you can see that red line. That means that these guys would come out. Even if these guys are on boats, would they? Re I wonder if they would reinforce. or Because if, if these guys don't reinforce, that's like, like 2,000 men not helping. I don't really want to risk it, honestly. I think even fighting against this and this is still a little bit scary. Is there any way for me to, like, um, disrupt the army? No, it doesn't look like it. So saying, it would be kind of nice if I could just, like, disrupt the army and stop it from reinforcing. But I'm not sure if you can do that. Okay, so we are replenishing. That's good. I guess I will just take another turn and maybe, I guess, another two turns. Are we really going to wait that long for attacking? I don't want them to build up, but I don't think they can have many more men. We've got all these spears coming up. Um, and now what I'll probably do actually is I probably will grab up some archers over here as well. Just to kind of really fill out that roster of soldiers. How is our family affair? My daughter died at 14? No! Oh no. At least my son in there is fine. Uh, we have this governor will stick into power for sure. Did he level up? I think he might have leveled up honestly. Uh, no, not quite yet. So that's the army even. That's the general. Did the governor level up here? Because if he did, that would be very nice to be able to start working down his, uh, his stats. No, not quite. Oh, no, he did. Yeah, cool. So we can get tax rate in local commerce for sure. That's amazing. Uh, native discontent is not really an issue. And we'll pick up the uh, sanitation, sure. Sanitation down to public order is pretty useful in growth. So, yeah, let's grab that. Definitely the sanitation. Ooh, the plus four sanitation wouldn't be bad as well. Just keeping this province really healthy. Because we've got a well being built. But still, this does also reduce uh, construction time by two. Oh, that's huge. I might actually do that then. Being able to upgrade this settlement uh, that much quicker would be amazing. T minus two turns. And cheaper buildings. Yeah, let's do that. I kind of wish I did that before. Nice. That's a big upgrade. That means that these will be done, yeah, like a lot quicker, hopefully. I yeah, a lot quicker. Okay, this army's just going to recruit. It's going to take us three turns. Really? What, because of this? Because I'm recruiting here? I'll get rid of a unit then if it makes this go faster. Because I, I, I don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to dilly-dally around. I want to be able to ready to go in. Obviously, this is the same... Yeah, same area. So, it's actually taking up the same recruitment space, which is understandable. So, my turn. If, obviously, if they attack us anywhere, I kind of need them to get out of, out of range of the garrison. I can take on both the armies... It's just very much, it's going to be a hard battle to fight all of them. Because they just have the numerical advantage. And I think in the early game in Ancient Empires, missiles are pretty strong. Until units start getting a lot more heavily armoured. So you want to try your best to, uh, yeah, get, your, get, get hooked up, get ready to go. And if they go for my main settlement, we at least have an army there. With that garrison, we're going to get a couple more extra spearmen. And as I said, every settlement in this game, I believe, is semi-walled. So, we should be able to repel the majority of the enemy units. I do definitely want to try and siege that castle. Because uh, I want to see the cool map. Because, again, they are Thrones Britannia-esque maps up here in the north of Gaul. Okay, so they're there and there and there. Okay, so ideally, the main goal should be, right, to... Smash this army in the north, bring our other army down. 
if we can siege the settlement and we can pick apart the army outside of the settlement very easily. Oh, nice. A good omen as well. I'll take that. We do need that public order bonus uh, pretty dramatically, honestly. Nice. Our gold mine has been built as well. You can already start to see that economy raging up pretty heavily. I imagine our trade income, uh, yeah, basically doubled as well with our, our clan, which we have been fighting. So these guys are set up here. Um, if we were to attack, we would get the garrison or we wouldn't? We wouldn't get the garrison? Why not? Also, oh my god. Rome declares war on Macedon. A lot of peace negotiations. And then some more war in there. Okay, cool. That's fine. They, they must just be off, right? They must be reinforcing us. No, they don't. Wow. Who would have thought it? They must be... They, the AI must have literally have, uh, picked that perfectly. Okay, we've got a spy here. We're still recruiting, so we are in no rush. Let's go ahead and grow up some extra archers just for this army. And then, yeah, then we'll look to engage them. This has also been built now as well. So we also have the option to, to upgrade the uh, the main province building that we do have as well. Uh, we obviously have... This is like my own cultural one right here. And then we have the ones that we conquer, the subjugated people ones. We have subjugated these guys. Uh, we can choose an oath sworn settlement, which is kind of like these guys have sworn to fight with me. Uh, they get a bit of like unhappiness because... You know, we're forcing them to like assimilate into our culture. Uh, we can also make them free and be like, you guys are independent, but you still like bow the knee to me. Makes them a little a lot happier, but they pay me less and I get less uh, men from them. This is kind of a nice little mix in between. Gives me a lot more money. Like, it's like I'm, t I'm taxing them a lot. Uh, and then we have this tributary, which means I'm taxing them a ton. So again, we have like the, the more military assimilation route uh, with the biggest garrison. We have free states, so meaning they're very independent. We have like, you pay me a decent amount of taxes. You give me a decent amount of men. And that's kind of it. Then we have, you pay me a ton of taxes, basically, uh, of it before. It does look maybe a little bit intimidating now and again, but it is pretty simple uh, once you get a good hang of it. Okay, cool. Well, we're just going to end the turn again. Sorry, I know we are ending the turn. And it's not exactly the most exciting gameplay, uh, but we will get into some battles very, very soon. We have a lot of money as well. I wish there was just more mercenaries for me to, to pick up. Because that would be uh, that would be very nice if we could grab up a lot of mercenaries. But right now, their forces are too consolidated in that province for us to, to really be able to touch them. We need to wait for, a, for them to dis disperse away. Even if both their armies are together, I think we could take them on. It's just with the garrison. The garrison's not really any good soldiers at all, but it's quantity, right? They have like six, maybe 7,000 soldiers if, if each unit is around 200. That adds up, you know. Every 10 stack, which they have over 2 to 10 stacks there, plus the garrison. Yeah, even just my, my rough estimates, they have about 6,000 men there. Whereas we have... Uh, you know, maybe three and a half. They're coming down. Good. Hopefully, can we get this guy? Oh, we can probably get that army. The problem is, oh my god, the AI is doing being so smart though. They're, they're pushing them in across the river as well. Because I'm very tempted to go and smash this army. Because this army could probably catch them. No, it couldn't. Okay. Could this army get to them? No. Oh god, no, no. Oh my god, I'm such a moron. Okay, well, I did not mean to do that. So, we are just going to sit here and maybe try and bait them out. We've got another 20 stack on the go, which is fine. Oh, my God, I did not mean it's, it's my bloody mouse when it, it, it keeps on, on clicking. Could upgrade our gold mine. Not going to do it right away. Probably should upgrade our main settlement chain. But it does give us access to a, a bunch of extra units. So, we get some Celtic Warhounds, which would be nice. So, let's invest in that. Next turn, we do also give a Squalor Boost as well. Uh, that will go out, go a long way at helping us out. And it only costs, it only takes five turns down instead of seven due to the uh, the governor we got upgraded. Okay, you're good there. You're still recruiting, which is good. We're going to need maybe some higher quality soldiers. I mean, you can already start to see our economy is draining itself, though. Uh, let's just grab a bunch of archers. This will be like more of a support army, and we'll probably bring it down next turn. This guy's out here. If they come in, we'll retreat, probably back to the garrison. The garrison's still pretty weak, but it's getting there. Technology is almost done as well. We're about to get local traditions, which is going to give us a little bit more state influence just to help us kind of battle away with the foreign culture that we are pretty dramatically struggling with right now. So dealing with that. And that's obviously going to be hurting our native discontent as well. Yeah, buildings, instability, governors boosting it. 
Okay, apparently our family power has gone down. Oh, god damn, it has, yeah. Uh, did I not- what happened to my wife? We'll seek another wife. I swear we got a wife last episode. Yeah, my son nearly needs to come of age. We need to start having some children. My son needs to obviously leave, leave the army as well. Because our power needs to go up. Because obviously, as we as we saw, the Golic people struggle with that power system. So we need to make sure we, we, we focus heavily on influence and getting our characters to, to a good state. I'm hoping they're going to sally out though and, and fight me. I really, really am. Because if we if we can take them on, like we're free of them on without the garrison, we might stand a good chance. Next turn, we're going to be able to catch that army that ran away like cowards. And we'll have a decent set of archers as well to do that. So let's see what they do. We are also on the road as well. So they shouldn't be able just to skip across and get to our settlement without engaging our army. Because we, we are on the road, so... That should give us an advantage in that way. So here they come. All three. Well, we'll retreat from this. If we have to fight them, we'll, we'll fight them. I'm, I'm not scared of that. Because advanced power is already pretty even. But, yeah. If they come at me now, I should still have the garrison involved. Yeah, the garrison's involved now. That's much better. Uh, obviously, this garrison is very weak. But we can now smash their army and then move on settlement. This army, I mean, they only got two armies engaged as well. I mean, both these armies are actually pretty decent. There's a lot of cavalry there. A lot of cavalry, my god. Um, but they're attacking me, which is always good, because they're going to tire themselves out marching towards me. My reinforcements should be coming on from the left. I mean, they still have a lot of men, though. Look at that, they have like 6,000 men. My god. And yeah, some scary cavalry as well. God, this is not going to be in as an easy a battle as I thought. They have a, we have like better infantry, but they have some slingers as well. It's going to be kind of scary. That range on the slings are going to be very deadly. Okay. God, I love these Thrones of Britannia battle maps. I really do. I'm pretty sure this is all Thrones of Britannia, uh, which is great. So our reinforcements, unfortunately, are coming over all the way over here. I'd love them to come over here and we could take a hill, but doesn't seem like that is going to be the case. Okay, so everyone just, uh, everyone just get your asses over here. Um, we're going to probably use the garrison as like a meat shield. More so than anything else, I think. So we'll just set up like, I don't know, like here. If we can. Sorry again. My, my If you guys saw the last episode, you, you know that my, my right click on my mouse is very broken. So that's not helpful when we're, we're trying to do some total war, I'll tell you. Some spearmen again. We're going to be very cautious of their cavalry. Luckily, we have we have a wealth of cavalry of our own. We'll stick that on this flank. Maybe just send one unit of spears over here as well, just to help them out. I mean, our general can just sit in the middle. Okay, because I mean, I think both sides will be waiting for our reinforcements to come on. I'm a little bit nervous of their range. They do have that slinger advantage. Um, but yeah, these extra units are going to be very valuable. And as I said, I'll probably use a majority of this garrison to, to basically cover our, our main assault. You know, like these guys can take the brunt of the, the damage because, again, we're going to need to... He's still smash another army that's going to be coming our way. We're, need, we're still going to need to do like quite a bit. So what I'll do is I'll skip ahead until the enemy are upon us and we are ready for the battle. Okay, so here they come, guys. They are very, very close to assaulting me. Uh, we have to be very cautious not to overcommit ourselves. We are trying our best to utilize the terrain to our advantage. We've got this rock that the enemy can't obviously traverse. Does it seem like the enemy are being very careless with their cavalry as well? I'm a little bit cautious of my cavalry, but we'll be able to volley off a couple hits off onto this Celtic horse. And if they want to overcommit as well, I'm happy with that. Lots of javelins going in on their cavalry. Um, so yeah, sure, engage me all you want. We can take out a unit of cavalry this early on. That would be very, very important. Hold five over the rest of the units. We'll let our missiles continue. Putting to bring back the, uh, these guys are fine here for now. The rest of their missiles are coming. Oh my god, I did not even see them over on this side. Okay, okay, that's my bad. I was not even paying attention. Uh, let's uh, definitely engage them here then. Missiles are doing a great job though. All the javelins are infantry as well. Definitely can't complain. Missiles here full back. Yeah, that's going to be painful. Seems like they're being very aggressive on my front line. But our missiles can get back, which is fine. And our missiles are, are definitely struggling, but able to at least get some volleys off on their soldiers as well. Yeah, I mean, if we can, if we can nullify that cavalry advantage this early on, that would be huge. And I definitely would not be unhappy with being able to do that. We lost another unit there, but that's fine. You guys sit up there. 
Our missiles are, are definitely struggling. And here they go. Another unit coming in. But again, this Celtic course is pretty depleted now. So we can just probably swarm it up. And then we can just take out the rest of their cavalry. We've got these javelins coming in as well. We're going to keep trying to keep a majority of our more quality-esque uh, men defended. Okay, we definitely need some more soldiers on this left flank for sure. Let's just do that. Our cavalry is fully committed, though, over here. we got spearmen, though. I would very much like you guys to chase down this horse because I do not want them to keep on fighting me. We'll reinforce as best as we can. Our missiles are continuing to volley again. Stupid, not, stupidly not having guard mode. Uh, our missiles are doing some pretty idiotic stuff. But luckily they're coming in very thick and fast. This right flank has kind of come in very aggressively. But everywhere else is not anything we really have to worry about too much. And yeah, the cavalry fight is seemingly gone pretty, pretty well. Yeah, let's bring back this cavalry now. Let's not overcommit it. Let's bring back the cavalry. Bring back the spears. Just hold your ground, guys. We've got the naked swordsman ready to push in. There you go. The front line is now fully engaged against their battle line. So let's probably start over committing now. Let's start pushing in on them. Our missiles are still doing a great job over on this flank. If we can pin down this flank as well, that'd be great. We have, we have plenty of reserves right now. And then, yeah, we want the naked fanatics to lob a javelin or two and then get themselves stuck in as well. So let's do that. Let's throw in the naked fanatics. Volley going in. These guys have super high melee offense, so... If they get stuck in, in a consistent fight, they will decimate their opponents. I want you archers to obviously keep on focusing down their missiles. Infantry wrapping up. And I guess you guys just reform. Reform the line. Ideally, we are, we are obviously trying our best to avoid heavy casualties in this battle. Luckily, they managed to withstand that. And we should be able to wrap that up as well. Okay. More and more of a battle is going pretty well in my favor. Obviously, this... This flank over here is not great, but we have so many in reserve that I'm not really too fussed about it, honestly. And as I said, I do want to kind of be a bit more aggressive, maybe, because we're about to completely wrap up this flank against their cavalry. Which is super nice. Let's bring back the cavalry. Missiles keep on shooting there, please. And let's just get a bit of our infantry stuck in. We have so many in reserve that... Yeah, let's start being a little bit more aggressive with our boys. We've got these spears wrapped up here as well. We got our general a little bit more stuck in as well. We, are, we could obviously do a, a nice little rally here. We also have a second wind as well. That's something we need to, to keep in mind of as well. As we do have access to that second wind. There's just a lot of spearmen. A lot of basic tier spearmen. Uh, still causing us a few issues. With our general up here. That's a very good unit. Bringing into reserve. Swords can go in there. We've got some javelins that can maybe go through the gap. You guys engage that. You guys just kind of hold this flank here. Two more spears we can bring up over on that side. Cavalry can start moving around. A unit of spears have come back from routing here. Start bringing this cavalry around. I really need to try and get this cavalry wrapped around and into their backs. Nice. Good job. All of their spearmen are getting absolutely massacred. Their swords obviously fare a little bit better. But there's a large amount of their forces. The second wind, the second wind is just a unit, right? Yeah. So let's just, you know, rally that unit in. It's perfect. And as I said, we really need to get this cavalry through the gaps and then in here because they're going to be invaluable at actually chasing down these routing soldiers when we do inevitably break them. Yeah, we've already got a big mass route here. Perfect. Uh, let's send some cavalry off after. We obviously want to avoid getting engaged there. Um, but let's send some cavalry off, obviously, after their, their routing units and also off after their units that are still around. So let's maybe start volleying in on this now. Cavalry going on that, please. You guys are hitting missiles and stuff, which is good. Infantry is still fighting. Uh, we've got obviously got a general unit here, which is something we need to deal with. I also very much probably need to deal with help and reinforce this left flank at some point. The naked fanatics, though, how well are they doing? 170, 180 kills on the naked fanatics. Can't ask much more of that. Unfortunately, some of our weaker units are breaking indeed. Uh, so maybe we just reinforce. Got some spare swords over here. Get you guys around there as well. Okay, swords obviously need you guys to do that. You guys are still fighting there. There was still plenty of reinforcements left to come as well. Our general is here. We don't need to pop a rally anywhere, right? Or oh, a rally over here would be valuable. Is there any way I can like reach it from like here? No, we actually have to get our asses over there. That's fine. Throw some cavalry in there. You guys definitely go chase that. You guys definitely go chase that. When you go and help out against that general unit. Got another unit of swords here. You guys go there. Boom, boom, boom. 
Archers, archers, archers. Maybe just situate yourself there. Maybe go over here and help out there. They just have a lot of men. They really do have that numerical advantage. That rally though will be important. Uh, keep on going after their missiles with the cavalry. We have one like good unit, one like pretty healthy, one not so healthy, and again another not so healthy one. Maybe let's hit that general, then come flying in there. Missiles just turning sheet there. Swords are fighting heavily. And yeah, reinforcing this section of the battlefield is going to be a little bit shaky. But again, big routes there. Going to smash into that general unit there, then pull out and then probably go after these guys to stop them from coming back from routing. Nice 3v1 here, but again, we are against the Celtic Noble Warband. This is like their one good unit that they do have, so bringing these guys down. It's going to be much harder than it looks, honestly. Some cavalry charges as well would not go amiss, but I really, as I said, want to make sure I, I really reduce the amount of men they have. So let's maybe bring back this one unit of cavalry to come help out. You guys pull out there. Some soldiers coming back from routing. We have a lot of missiles here. And yeah, we really need some breaks in their battle line. Let's maybe charge in there. Killing this unit as well would be good if we could break this one unit here. That would be huge. I am very nervous that our flank is going to break. Obviously as well, killing their general would be huge. But breaking this would just free up a lot of my own men. And obviously it is the scarier unit we are having to deal with. As you can end up bringing back this unit as well. We got any, we got a second wind back. Okay, second wind, I guess on this unit that's close to breaking. Oh, it's actually second wind on everyone. Nice. That's huge. Okay, let's come back in now. Try and cause a bit of a break here of our cavalry charge. If we could break that one unit, that would be massive. I just free up so many of our own units to come back in. We've got this unit of cavalry rushing back as well. Oh my god, look at this flank. They are surrounded. Hold the line, boys. Okay, good. Big break, big break, break. Okay, we need to reinforce this section. I know, obviously, we are under heavy fighting here, but I'd rather win a flank than lose both flanks. I think we need to get ourselves over here. Cavalry come in. We can probably try and rear charge these and break this. And yeah, we just have to hope this one unit of Celtic Noble Warband holds the goddamn line. I'm going to drop a rally there when I can as well. So this general, let's get this cavalry to come flying in. This cavalry comes flying in there. General's going to pop a rally. Please rush over there. I know you, you are tired, my boys, but I need you in there. We'll charge into the back of these guys. Try and break them from that charge. You guys should be running as well. All the archers have come over as well. Maybe just smash this. Nice. Broken this section. That's going to free up everyone to now come in. Let's not get the cavalry and just charge everyone else in there. Cavalry should be going off after this direction though, please. Good little charge there into the general unit. Who seemingly is trying to get over here to probably drop a rally or something. Cavalry continue to chase down. Some infantry there, got some infantry here. And yeah, we just got a, we got a lot of soldiers coming in here. And this could be a big mass route for us. Nice, broken that general. That should be GG. I want to make sure I try and kill that general though, if at all possible. And there you go. Look at that route. That's what we want to see. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, cavalry start having a good time. As I said, I really want to kill that general, but I also want to kill the bigger groups of soldiers. We're going to have to obviously follow up on this battle at some point. Well, that was a pretty scary one. How many men do they have here? They had four. They had 6,000 men. We had 5,000, but my God, that's a lot they had. Um, and yeah, cavalry just keep on chasing them down until basically they have no one left uh, for us to really worry about. And we can probably triple speed now. Yeah, this flank is now going. And you guys can continue to chase them down as best as possible. Obviously, we're not going to be able to chase down everyone on this flank. But you know, if I can just clear up one of the flanks, I'll be pretty happy there. Because, again, we just want to make sure that they don't have enough men to basically reform the unit. If they have, I think, anywhere above 10% of the unit, they will likely to reform it. 
and it'll be fine. Whereas if we can reduce them numbers down, just, you know, down to like 10 soldiers from 200, which is more of like 5%, uh, I think it's more likely that the unit will just be wiped straight away and we, we, we no longer have to deal with it. So uh, yeah, let's just clear out the last couple units of these Celtic spearmen. Because again, you guys saw, like, we definitely have the quality in this battle. You know, a lot of our infantry, 290 kills, 250 kills, 174, 280. This unit has 300 kills. The naked uh, swords from 280. You know, at the end of the day, they had a very large force. But their numbers almost won them that battle. They really, really did. Uh, I doubt we'll chase any of them, so we'll just end it. So how many did we kill in the end? We we killed 5,000. That's huge. We lost over almost half our force. And obviously, the cavalry. The reason the cavalry gets so many kills uh, isn't because they're getting these kills. It's because when they when they smash into the back of an enemy unit, that unit then generally routes because we're, we're fighting with low-tier units. And then the cavalry kills them as they route. That's why you'll generally see in Ancient Empire battles uh, the cavalry with a ton of kills. It's not that the cavalry are ridiculously OP or anything. It's just generally because uh, they get all the routing kills. So the money would be nice, but I think we have to take the 12% replenishment. I need a bigger force so that we can uh, push on them still and uh, finish these guys off. And now we're taking attrition, which is good. They're going to retreat back. That's not so good, obviously. But we are bringing up that extra reinforcement army. So what we're going to do is we're going to smash this army across the river. We're going to bring up our reinforcement army. Apparently our Imperium level went up, which I'm not really sure how because we haven't taken another settlement. But hey, I'll take it. Uh, we can get another spy, which is always useful. We uh, also got married. And maybe because we got married, so our power went up. Uh, but she is a cheating wife. Okay, great. Not what I wanted. I wanted more sons to boost our power. But I guess it's not going to be the case, unfortunately. Um, okay, okay, okay. So, we smash this army. Definitely. We bring this force down. It's some, Obviously, it's winter, so we're not moving very far. But let's do it. We'll bring this army down. Uh, he also leveled up as well. Good. He's leveling up very nicely. Second win two would be very good. And then the campaign movement range maybe. So campaign movement range up to 24 extra campaign movement range. is just bonkers. Then we grab up the, the cavalry commander. For second win two. Perfect. And cavalry is generally really expensive. Our management level is, is not bad as well. As commander we get an upkeep cost because our, our management is level what, seven. Yeah, because we've got governance is up pretty high. We're getting, uh, yeah, cheaper infantry, which isn't bad at all. Commander is a little bit more integrity. And I think we get better. Yeah, rally and inspire. I mean, influence is giving us um, not too much as a commander, which is fine. So, yeah, I mean, we definitely smash this army whilst we can. It's an easy battle, nothing for us to worry about. And again, we might be able to take on some of our prisoners as well. 4% replenishment, that's probably all my losses. And there's uh, no way for us to escape, even if we force march out. If we force march, How tired you are. we could get back into friendly territory. I'm a little bit nervous of though, them coming after me, because they can basically go anywhere. But I think I'd rather force march my way out, and if they attack me, they attack me. Okay, so at least that way, I don't think we're replenishing, but because it's winter... But we will at least not be taking attrition. The army also leveled up. So cool. Well, last time we got this extra charge bonus. Now what do we want? Um, cultural bonuses. Like these public order stuff are, aren't bad, honestly. But I think we'll go down this route. So this is quite nice. Reduction in enemy integrity and also replenishment in your land. I love that. I love that these barbar the barbarian tradition tree for the army. This is so awesome. Like... If I'm Rome and I'm invading the Barbarians and they have armies like this, like... If we're in the same region, they're suddenly getting less integrity, which is actually much bigger than you guys think. Especially as, like, the Romans. And also replenishment and stuff like that is so cool. Uh, we'll definitely take the campaign movement range, though. <laughs> After saying how cool that is, I think we'll definitely take the uh, campaign movement range and the upkeep. I mean, this is just too good. Scouting and foraging is just very good. Okay, I mean, next turn, we will march on the city. As I don't have too much there. I guess we will also just recruit some more men as well. Oh, it's only going to take us two turns. Probably because we're not in... Because probably because we're, we're, we're outside the settlement. Our tech is also done as well. I guess we will start working on the, uh, the next warband tech. This one also would not be a bad idea either. I might just grab that for four turns. Get me extra money from agriculture is good. Um, even though we only have one agricultural place, we probably will end up building another one. Fairly soon. We have 22k in the bank as well. 
I'm kind of just stockpiling this money until we need to upgrade stuff. I'm probably going to do a, do a lot in the big city when we take it. Which is ideally one of the reasons why I'm trying to, trying to save my money. It's also good for diplomacy as well. I want to kind of get this first region done. And then we can start to look, you know, what direction we're going to be conquering in the next. Whether we're going to be going into Spain. Or if whether we're going to be going more so into the, uh, like, towards the Romans. Which I think we might do. Rome is busy fighting in Greece right now. They should be busy for at least some time. I imagine Mastodon isn't exactly the easiest army for them to defeat. With them pikes. And that, that should buy us time, you know. Again, Rome is always going to be if they do actually come out, which is what we expected. If it's not good as well, this is an ambush. But they don't really have the best men. I mean, maybe it's not an ambush. We are in Force March. Yeah, I don't think it's actually an ambush. I think it's just a... Uh, we're just very tired in this battle. Like, we start off... We Basically, our energy can't go above normal. Yeah. Oh, it's a river crossing as well. Oh, this is easy. This is super easy. Basically, yeah. Basically, this isn't like uh, Warhammer where we, we immediately in an ambush could be Force Marched. Uh, we are just simply uh, very tired. Which, again, is... is don't get me, um, we're not even very tired. Wow, what all the negatives of Force March then? We'll have to look at that. Because they get they must have changed it, right? We'll they must have changed it. Uh, so we'll just do this and we'll see where the enemy are coming from. Archers can just kind of be in the center. Cavalry can just chill. General, I guess, go on this side. And then what are we missing? We've got some uh, spearmen up here as well, which I guess can go over here. Okay, we're coming over here. Let's just shift all our army over here. Let's get our missiles here as well. Let's triple speed it. Uh, if they're going to come across the river and not wait for our reinforcements, it's going to be pretty big as well. Let's see what they do. Arch is going to come over and just obviously pepper them as they cross the river. Oh my god, this unit of archers is actually... Oh yeah, so we do we do uh, get very tired. Okay, that makes sense. You can see our archers do not benefit well with being this tired. And there's no way for our men to get back from not being this tired. So that's, this is going to be actually a difficult battle unless we can segregate them. How many of these archers can shoot now? You guys all in range? Good. Yeah, I'm hoping this will be enough to, to break them across. Obviously, we're waiting for the rest of the boys to go over as well. Just march. Got a cavalry that can come across here. Archers doing a pretty good job as well. Just taking down some of these Celtic Warband. Can't complain there. There's some javelins as well up here. So yeah, let's just triple speed it unless they try and come across. Again, our archers are doing some decent uh, decent damage as well. And getting some good kills on cavalry and other stuff like that as well. Seems like they are reforming. Are they crossing the river? We actually need to fall back a little bit. Because we are so tired right now. Uh, just hit that cavalry if you guys can. The yeah, is actually doing relatively smart stuff right now. And not, uh, not over committing their, their soldiers until everyone's here. Yeah, I mean, Force March really is going to be painful in this mod. It really is. God damn, I need to stop reforming. My archers are shooting and they need a... Uh... Let's shoot that. Yeah, shoot the cavalry if you can. It's a lot of Celtic horse. I wouldn't mind volleying into that a little bit. Just taking out a handful of these, these cavalrymen. Before they fully get across. I mean, again, their men aren't good. But, you know, every horse we can kill is, is pretty crucial. Uh, we do have spearmen over here as well. You guys... Oh my god, you guys aren't even over here yet. Fuck. Because I was going to say, I do desperately need uh, the spearmen up front, really. To absorb the javelin fire. Okay, it's almost one unit of Celtic horse dealt with. Okay, I'll take that. I mean, we still have a handful more. I guess we will start to shift our cavalry back over onto his flank again. But yeah, as I was saying, like, yeah... Force March is super painful in this mod. Because if you get caught in Force March or against a proper army, like, like luckily this army is very depleted. But yeah, that's going to be very deadly indeed. So we'll start trying to push our cavalry across the other side. Our reinforcements have now arrived, but here they come. Okay, missiles go like there. Javelins get like there. Infantry, pretty dense with lines, please, with the infantry. They should arrive in time before this cavalry comes smashing into me as well. I wonder as well if Second Wind will help us out. Probably not, right? 
Okay, boys should all be formed up. Missiles in position. Reinforcements. So this is our second line. I'm going to rest these guys, like, here. And we have the spears as well. Spears can pretty much just go in. Yeah, cavalry's being sent packing. Uh, so let's see if second wind actually does help. No, it doesn't. There's like a there's like a hard cap on how much, like a true hard cap on how much uh, replenishment we actually can get, which is I guess makes sense. Otherwise, force march would be pretty silly. Okay, we're gonna definitely need more reinforcements in this section, so let's, let's push these guys in. Obviously, avoid throwing in our, our higher quality men. Cavalry need to get across. We can win this if the cavalry come in and deal with this, right? If we recharge, battle is probably won. If they can break through our lines before that happens, battle's gonna be a, you know a whole nother, uh, a whole nother situation. We have a nice rally as well, which I definitely will not take for granted. And yeah, definitely try and hit this mercenary Celtic warband. Cavalry is gonna be exhausted by the time they get over here, though. They truly are. But we'll, we'll tell them to walk for now, just because they may at least retain some energy. But we're gonna have to run them at some point. Can you guys volley over into the uh, into the into the river? I wonder. I guess not. Can get. Oh, there you go. Yeah, nice. Good, good javelins into the the core of their line. Definitely want to get these naked fanatics in. Who's routing? Oh, some archers are running. Okay, the archers are literally just so tired, but they're like, "Fuck this, we're we're gonna Benny's boys. Let's go get some breakfast." To be honest, can't really complain. Okay, let's get let's get these guys stuck in as well. The archers are just continuing to volley into the, the mass. As I said, I'd, I'd very much like to kill the cavalry. So, because if we can take care of the cavalry, then battle becomes much easier. Because then it means like this little charge here can then get stuck in a lot more effectively. Because this front line is going to be able to hold for some time if we go down it. You can see the brutal fighting. We obviously have our general in there. We can second wind again. Which is good, because it will stop our men from getting exhausted. And the exhausted tick is really what's scary. We can basically, with this second wind, keep everyone here uh, on tired. And eventually, the enemy units, because these guys are just the Celtic swordsmen, they get very, they get tired a lot quicker than, say, your normal units do. Like, my, my swordsmen, we at least have, I think they have decent fatigue. Well, we got high, highly trained, so they're not going to route too much when our jab, when our general dies. They're inspired because of the general. And they've got good stamina, so it means that they're going to recover and also lose their fatigue a lot slower than, say, these guys who have poor stamina. So we'll even the battlefield a lot quicker than we necessarily would normally think. They keep on hitting that Celtic boy. That's actually a general unit. Oh, my God. Our cavalry will get slaughtered if we engage that. Yeah, just hammer it with everything we've got. Can maybe even just put pull our way through here as well. Is everyone okay morale wise? Yeah, they are. But as I said, that fatigue, that second fatigue thing is actually pretty big. Okay, cavalry, maybe start to make your move now. Let's clear up these two guys. Obviously, that general unit is still super ultra scary. We have a very, very good unit here as well. This is our mercenary tier three heavy melee infantry. Okay, Cavalry, I want two of you to go into this unit and one of you to go into this unit, please. They're going to turn and probably get a good volley off on us, but... We should have enough to, uh, yeah, just basically smash into them and route them. These guys are un unsupported. Javelin's coming in as well. The Cavalry should be able to run them down. Nice, managed to catch both of them here as well. So they're a little bit nervous of them maybe bringing over another unit, but shouldn't be too bad. As long as their general unit stays in that combat, we'll be good. Anyone need a rally? No, I mean, we could do a rally over here, honestly. Just keep these archers from just, like, constantly shooting. Second wind is back as well. Let's just keep our, ourselves... God, our second wind is just so going to be so broken in this campaign. The ability to, to keep our uh, keep our cavalry in just basically our entire, like, front from uh, getting super tired is going to be huge. And as you can start to see, like, their men are getting tired now after this long fight. Keep on chasing them down. Again, we need to kill these guys as well because 
We need to make sure they don't have the armies. We need to obviously siege them as well as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, that cavalry unit doesn't have breaking. Okay, you guys are pretty much completely gone now. So now let's focus on this unit. Hopefully, our unit there will come back from routing. The archers are just continuing to work. They're just basically trying to work down that one unit as best as they can. But our infantry line is uh, yeah, very aggressive, able to push through. And there you go. Big break there. We can now get these, uh, these axemen a little bit further on. Let's get the, uh, the elite unit over on this side as well. And let's maybe queue up a, a move right like so. Let's keep on just chasing down soldiers as best as we can. God, even after all this missile fire as well, that unit of uh, cavalry there are doing a very good job. Okay, the enemy did stop us a little bit here, but nothing we can't handle. It's really start to push the momentum. We'll throw in our general as well. It'll be good to level him up. Uh, so we'll throw him in. And I ideally want to try and hit these guys before they come back from routing. And obviously avoid fighting my general at all costs, because he will rip me apart. Our missiles are just firing everything they've got at him. And you guys deal with that perfectly. It should be a, a pretty easy battle now. I was a little bit nervous, but I, I knew we could win this one, right? Ah, uh, they're going to charge me here. I came a little bit too close, I think. Catch him. Catch him. Everything you got, boys. Okay, that's that unit done with. Let's just finish these guys off. You guys finished that off. There you go. We've kind of closed the noose now. Very effectively. There we go. Second wind ourselves into into victory. That cavalry unit is still like a cavalry unit is now broken. Perfect. Right, they are completely surrounded now. There is nowhere for them to go. I imagine they'll be routing momentarily. And our cavalry is just here as well, having an absolute time of their lives. So there you go, in mass route. We'll just obviously focus in on killing the big blob here. Maybe we can kill their general as well, Archer Fire. Probably not at this point, though. So, even just get these guys involved as well. It's like, kill anyone you can here. Or at least capture, I say. We're not exactly killing them, are we? We're, we're capturing them. But this should be basically the War 1. Obviously, I still want to siege them, but that siege might actually have to end up being for next episode, the beginning of the next episode. Yeah, there we go. Basically, no one. No one escaped. A few maybe did. Um... Look at that. That was a slaughter. They just weren't prepared for that battle at all. They really weren't. They just had no quality. Like, their, their previous two armies had the quality. And if they were going to win a, win a war, that was going to be it. Luckily, though, we came out on top. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, cool. So, again, we'll take our replenishment. Just any extra men we can get will be great. Um, and, yeah, their armies are going to be pretty broken now. We'll finish this army off, but I, I will probably need to replenish if I'm, if I'm planning on taking the settlement. So, I'll probably move my army back into the city there. So, yeah. Uh, mutiny imminent, really? Where? With this army? Okay, well, we're going to have to... I don't want to lose the control. I hate these events. I really do. Because our control will go below 50%, which is just not good. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll have to. Because, yeah, if we lose... I mean, the control is actually not that that important, I don't think. I think it directly affects your power, which we need to get back there. Because we've got some big negatives there. But until our sun comes of age, there's not really much we can do. Um, okay. Cool. So, what does this force march actually do again? Let's just double check. So, winded, we get way more campaign movement, and we lose integrity. Okay. Raiding is pretty good. We get loads of food, upkeep costs to get. Raiding is obviously ideally what we want to do. So, you guys come in here. Just finish this off. Nice little battle there for us to uh, to level up our general as well. We'll probably... Yeah, probably just take our replenishment. Why not? Order. Yeah, nice little level up for the general. I'll take it. His integrity is not great. We'll take your campaign movement range. And I guess we'll go towards second wind just because it's really good. Oh, nice. We've also got a poet as well. Two popularity. Popularity doesn't really help us as a general. But maybe he could eventually become a governor, retire in his old age. And now we're able to now bring our army back into this settlement. Um, which is good. And what I might do is there's no way that they, their army there can, can stop us. So 
What I might do is I might move to like... I might just stay here and, and just raid, honestly. Our integrity is going off massively next turn because we won a battle and we're in hostile territory. So that's, that's pretty big. This army is going to build up and I, I guess as well we'll recruit a unit. Just uh, why not? We'll probably be here for two turns, right? What are we in spring or autumn? Yeah, we're in spring. So we'll attack in the autumn. Siege through winter. Because we'll be bunkered down in winter. Their army is not replenishing. It is replenishing, but it's pretty battered. We'll raid for a turn or two, which will give us more food as well, right? Yeah, this gives us more food, cheaper units, more integrity. And we can also move and raid as well. Nice, yeah. So we might move and raid. And we can get you another unit. A pretty expensive, but probably worth the infantry. We have the money, so let's do it. Building-wise as well, is there any buildings we want to do? Probably do, right? So we, we managed to get this... Oh, we, this is our culture building. I forgot. I thought I was building the... the I thought I decided on getting the the sanitation building, but I guess I must not have been. I must have uh, not. So what do we want here? Influence is, is nice, but we're not the governor. Income from local happiness, not bad. Agriculture. I mean, we do have what? In, is this industry or commerce? Industry. Yeah, industry is something we probably do want to try and boost. But I guess not yet. So what do we want to do here? I probably should level up the main settlement building as well. Just because it gives you a decent amount. So these are going to probably be oath sworn settlement. Like a settlement that has sworn itself to me, right? Mm. Definitely don't want to go free state. Because free state is just... It's just... I mean, free state honestly is not bad. It's just we don't get a lot from maintenance and stuff. Yeah, you just get a lot more money through political tributary. So maybe just a claimed hamlet. Allies of the tribe given a free hand in the uh, main domain matters of their due. So they kind of have some. They have some authority, but not really a lot. But then again, this is like a home settlement, so I kind of am tempted to just to grab this one up. It's the biggest garrison as well. Yeah, Oathsworn settlement. This is our like home region. So let's grab. Let's do that for sure. Now diplomacy. Is there anything else we want to do? Kind of got these guys on the back foot. Is there anyone else we can trade with? Uh, I mean, a lot of people probably would like to trade with me now. Is that gold we have? No, we still don't want to trade for my gold, really. Okay, is there any friends who want to pick up? These guys probably like me a decent amount now as well. But the question is, are we going to go into that land and conquer them? I guess we're not going to now. Let's get ourselves some aggression with them as well. Cool, non aggression. I guess we're not going to go into Kelsia. Yeah, I guess we'll just take this region and then probably push down into the Massilian lands. Even though, obviously, Massilia is allied with Rome. And I guess we'll maybe start working our way through these guys. Yeah. Because taking this will be good. This will give us a port, which will be amazing. So, we actually will get a port from this one, which will also be amazing. All right, cool. Let's end the turn. See what the enemy do. Oh, we also have... Uh, oh, this army leveled up? But no, it didn't. It's, it says it's going to rebel, but it's fine. It's, it's raiding its enemy territory. It's going to have a way all the time. So nothing to, to really worry about there with this unit. Rome, so Rome chugging the game as well there. I don't know what they were up to, but they were definitely up to something. That is for sure. I can't imagine they'll have any any way to sally out. And we bought the mercenary as well from our, our region. So they can't even buy that mercenary unit anymore, which is huge. And yeah, we just wait maybe a turn or two to replenish. And then we go out to the city. We could also just merge and go as well. Wouldn't be a bad idea, honestly, actually. Just like merging our army and then, then going in. Oh, they, whoa, where are they going? They're after, they're after America, guys. They're going to Vinland. They're going to Vinland to, uh, to start a new life. Can't blame them. Ligurian tribes have been destroyed. Oh, who destroyed the Ligurian tribes? God damn, people are, are hurting me. Yeah, Rome. God damn, Rome is going to be the end of us for sure. There is no way we can deal with them. Uh, cool, so we just merge then. We just merge uh, and we go for it, right? 
We, we, we initiate the siege. Uh, we start probably investing in siege towers because it's going to be a, a probably a pretty hard settlement, right? What we got? Friends of Britannia map? Yeah, Friends of Britannia map. I love them. It's so awesome that they're in this game. We are. They don't really have a lot of men, but they still have some. And these maps are generally designed to be defended. Um, so let's yeah, bring him in. This army can still raid. I love that this army can raid and also participate in this as well. We don't get we don't get any negatives either. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. I love that we can raid and move. It's just so much more barbarian esque than like in Rome two when you have to raid and you have to stand still. I always felt like that sucked quite a lot. But lots of food. So this is a rural. So this is a communal region, and this is rural. So this place is rural, right? Yeah, this place is rural, which means things take longer to build. Our culture isn't great. Infrastructure isn't great either. But we make loads more food. Way more fertility. And farms make way more money. Okay. So we're going to want to probably build another farm here at some point. Just for the money. Which we can definitely do. But I think this building was pretty important. Just from a cultural boost that we, we do just really need. Can we build a, a priest now as well? No. Just another spy. Which honestly would not be a bad idea to grab up another spy. Just whoever the youngest is really. Yeah. Just setting him, like, keeping an eye on Rome is always a good idea. And uh, maybe just discovering more of Spain as well. So we have a good idea of what's out here. It's also a pretty good idea. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's where we're going to end the episode today, guys. I know after I've cut some stuff out, this won't be an hour long. But I've recorded for an hour and I need to get ready for the stream. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to like and a comment. Next episode, we will be sieging this castle. I will be fighting this battle once our siege equipment is done. So that should be pretty fun. We have a few things we obviously have to deal with. My son is going to be coming of age pretty soon. Hopefully I can uh, set him as, uh, I think next uh, year I can set him as a retainer. And he can follow around the king and get some uh, stronger stuff. Probably also do need to start uh, maybe boosting my uh, uh, boosting my support, maybe. So we might try and do that. Our wife is also getting some influence as well. So we'll have to see how that turns out next episode. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like in the comment down below. And I'll see you guys, uh, yeah, tomorrow.